Hello. Hi, Ellen. How are you? I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm okay. Where in the world are you right now? I'm in Toronto. Thanks for having me. This is mm -hmm. amazing. I gotta say, you were a man with like, since we first met about almost a year ago, you have had like 18 different hairstyles. What is going on? You've shaved your head. You're one of the quarantine head shaves. What happened here? I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, maybe it's quarantine. Yeah, I don't know. I just figured, you know, switch yeah. it up. You got tired up. of the blonde hair and you just great. were like, no, nah, I'm good. I had a beard. I had a big beard for a bit and it was, you know, it was itchy. You know, I was sleeping on it and it was kind of getting in the way of things. So I just kind of figured it out. I got you. Out. How's your quarantine Freshen going though, aside from the shaving of your head? <laughs> uh, it's going great, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, I like kind of hanging out and, and having me time. So I've been doing a lot of that. I've been bouncing between... Uh, um, a cabin up north, uh, just north of Toronto, and and my house down here. So, I've been very lucky in that sense of just having some space to get out. Are there people you can see out. during quarantining, or are you like, are you, you quarantining mean? with anybody? Have you been able to see anyone? Oh, oh, uh, yeah, I'm quarantining with my uncle actually. It's oh, pretty nice. awesome. He's a good friend of mine, so it's it's pretty sweet. We're just uh, yeah, we're just cooking food and. Hanging out. And yeah, when you good. go further up north and you go up to your cabin, what do you do there? Um, kind of a lot of the same I do here, just like with walking outside. I, I just bought a, a motorcycle, which I'm real, real stoked. Oh, on. nice! So what kind of bike? Been riding, <laughs> yeah, I've been riding around up there, ripping it up. Um, it's a Suzuki DR650. It's a big old. How fast does that go? Kind of like 80, 80s looking fast. Yeah, it goes yeah. fast. That's sure. awesome. And the roads yeah. are kind of wide open right now, so it's a good time to test that bad boy out. I actually don't have my license, so. What? <laughs> uh, I, don't have my, I don't have my license yet, so I'm just ripping it up on uh, some dirt roads and stuff just by my gotcha. cottage. And it's an off-road off bike, so it's, it, it, it works for that. But, uh, yeah, the first thing I'm going to do when, when they let me is go to uh, go get my license and then, yeah. Take a little road trip. Gotcha, that's really cool. So what have you been up to like staying mm -hmm. busy wise in quarantine? Like what keeps you occupied? Uh, music. A lot of music, yeah. Um I've been writing a lot, working with uh working with my, my like two close friends who are produ both are producers and who were they? Um uh Moose, who's like a long time producer of mine, me and him have done everything mm -hmm. from day one and uh, my buddy Loesch, Sir Loesch, uh, he's uh, he's a wicked producer. Me and him became friends uh, almost like six years ago now, I guess, uh, maybe seven. And yeah, it's just epic. The two of them kind of have different sounds, and it's really nice for me to just kind of bounce back. And, and forth. then where does Alex the Kid fit in the picture? Uh, he's he's just a wicked wicked friend. Also, he's he's out in L.A. I mean, if I was if if quarantine wasn't going on right now, if quarantine wasn't happening right now, I'd be on, on road. I'd be touring, but um, I would be probably, if I wasn't doing that, I'd be out working with him on some stuff for sure. I mean, we were, we were cooking up a lot of good stuff just before this kind of all hit. So what were you working on? Yeah. I mean, just creative ideas, really just um, a lot of, a lot of stuff is, is music, but a lot of stuff is also just us trying to figure out, you know, what trying to predict trends, I guess, or figure out, um, you know, things that we could be doing that are more than just music or, or you know, uh, working creative muscles in, in that kind of sense, you know, just trying to mm -hmm. try new stuff. When I think about yeah. you sometimes and your sound, mm -hmm. I'm going to paint a little picture for you, if you will. You know how um, mm -hmm. Tarantino says that he writes his films based on finding the music first and then writes the films after he finds the songs? I feel like yeah, for some reason... and tell me how it actually works for you that you write films and then write your songs based on films or you watch films and then write your songs based on films. You're not wrong. Um, you know, I think uh, I'll watch a film and I'll hear a quote, you know, I'll hear a character say something or I'll like a character or I like the whole movie, but, and it'll give me an idea for a song or it'll give me an idea for a hook or maybe an even even if i'm lucky sometimes an album um but yeah it's definitely it's all like i have like a weird you got to hit on all the senses so it's not just like music for me it has to just hit mm -hmm. 
on all six cylinders you know what i mean it's just got to it's got to be more than just music for me it's got to be some kind of experience but i don't like the word experience and i did but it was um i heard someone say it's a lazy way of describing things um have you ever heard of in new york they have something called sleep no more you ever heard of that mm -mm, what's that it's like a, a living breathing play okay. where you essentially you can walk around the theater and uh everyone's wearing a mask and um you all can just walk around on your own free will but there's different parts of the play happening live and you can choose to follow the play and that for me kind of just it blew me away and um ever since that it's always been about more than just music what can we do that i hate also hate the word franchise but yeah how can we kind of go franchise with this how can we go bigger than music and and is that you why know, in christian you hear sort of lot, bring bring it to the I think I'm losing you for a second. It's spinning. Sorry? There you are. Okay. You came out of focus. Yeah, give me a that, second. I, was... I lost you again. I got you back. Though. We're back. Good. Sorry, one more time. So I was going to ask you, yeah. though, in relation to all of that, how you're trying to bring things from maybe 2D to more even 3D, right? Or 4D, if you will. Um, in Christian, mm -hmm. is that why you hear the themes of the big show in Madhouse and things like that? It sounds like kind of over the top theatrical things or what was the basis for that yeah i mean christian but a bit of like a it was a bit of a tornado of an album i think um just mixing well I, it is a big show it's a big circus i think i've been part of this big circus for a bit now and you know i'm a i'm a niche artist i guess or something i, I don't know i'm just kind of a I'm a bit of a weirdo, you know, so I don't know. It's, I feel like it's a circus. Maybe to other people, it doesn't feel like one, but definitely to me, it does. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I don't think anyone ever fits into a circus. <laughs> I think that's the whole point of it. So, I guess, well, I, I mean, know. at one point, you had mariachis open up your shows. It was, that was the one that happened yeah, the night they shut down the streets by First Avenue, right? And, they did the Prince tribute, and then you were trying to go on stage with mariachis at 7th Street Entry, right? Yeah. That's right. Yes, that was the last, I think, that my, my very last show um, so mm -hmm, of that tour. So you did that, and then you had Magic, right, on the most recent tour? Yeah. So what right. were you planning to bring out, or what are you planning to bring out to support Christian when you hit the road, finally? Oh, we were going to do a Madden. Really? And the include in keeping with the M's. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get a live bull to run around in the audience and kind of get, everyone would have to kind of get out of the way and, <laughs> you know, around for their lives. <laughs> no, I, I honestly, um, for this for this show, we were gonna do uh, an hour before show, which was uh, new because normally we do two hours. So we're gonna do doors open hour before show, no opening act. Um, I was gonna go out and do uh, a, live, a live show with like a full band and play Christian and then songs off uh, the other albums, like some of the more well-known songs off the other albums. But it was going to be just like really raw and unrefined Alan Raymond with, with a band. I think it was, it, you know, for me, I think in these settings, you know, some, some of the rooms are smaller, some of the ones get bigger. And to kind of bring it into that intimate setting, a lot of people, I think, want yeah. to see that. And, you know, I did, I just did a tour where it was just me on stage. So this, the stark contrast of uh, you know a lone wolf up there in, in big setting to a big band in a small setting i think could be uh i thought it would just be a lot of fun and i'm i'm bummed i couldn't do it so we're working on a live show right now actually though that we're gonna do online and so. tell me more about that what are you planning to do yeah uh, we're gonna do uh man i'm so stoked about this because we just figured it out but uh, i'm gonna do um the plan is to do four shows uh, in June online uh, online yeah online and with the full band uh, I'm gonna do it up north we're gonna get uh, you know a whole like um, LTE emitter or whatever you can do to make sure that you know we have good signal and good sound and, and we're gonna put on a good good live show and I think you know that this is the the way it's gonna be for a bit then I want to perfect that and, uh, and bring up bring a live show that um, that you know is uh, it, the way we do it. You know, it's got to be different. It's got to be unique, but it's got to hit hard. So we're we're trying to we're trying to work at a, a, a live experience for people that 
Don't Where do you think that. you'll be doing that? Instagram, YouTube, Facebook? How is it going to work? Uh, we're going to do it. I'd like to say, you know, in my perfect world, I'd like to do it through alanraymond.com. Okay. So um, that that would be my, my goal. But obviously, I mean, I don't know technology that well. So someone's probably got other <laughs> plans for that. But either way, it'll be... Uh, it'll be um, it's going to happen. So I'm going to make well, sure Well, I know happens. myself yeah. as a fan and all of your fans in here are probably really stoked for that because anyone who's a fan of your music and familiar, I mean, we're talking multiple albums at this point. We know how special yeah. your voice is and I'm not just trying to gas you right now. You have such a special voice no, I... that doesn't require production in a world that's so digitally influenced. It's going to be so great. I mean, I really think that this is an opportunity for you to showcase how naturally talented you are compared to people not that there's anything wrong with produced voices but your voice is so unique and yeah. wow i appreciate what you're saying right now because it's honestly you're hitting it right on the right on the head because for the first time ever and i'll say it to any artists would-be artists out there you're listening you know the stage is even it's you're going to the the people who play arenas and the people who play the dives we have the same stage right now and it's online so you have an even playing field and uh you know if you can uh use that in your advantage and, and try and showcase your sh you know strut your stuff i think um i've always been confident in my live show you know i'm not one for calling out anyone or, or saying anything but i think you know we toe to toe we we, we can we can pull a live show no, yeah. no problem so as long as we can drive that live and have that same element that same excitement feel to it which we're gonna do uh we're, I think this could be a, a real big moment for, for us. And I'm real, real excited about it. My, so is my whole team. I 100% so. agree. Yeah, we're very I stoked. feel like I haven't known you as long mm -hmm. as some of your fans because um, I feel like it took a minute to trickle across the border from Canada to America. But, you know, since 13 and yeah. all of, you know, Hotel Allen and Roadhouse and all of those different albums, we're now four albums deep. Now are we five? Yep. Four? We're four in, yeah. And we're you're, five with Courtney, but Courtney's... It says Courtney's a single on Spotify, so I have no <laughs> idea there. But or I'd say Courtney's an album. But no. And you're already working Score. on the next album, which is what us as fans we love about you is that you don't stop. You just sort of put something out, and then you're like on to the next thing, working on the next project, kind of putting out more art. I'll, all the time. I'll tell you right now, if I could drop, I could drop something right now. It's called the Verona mixtape. It's called Verona's mixtape, and we're gonna drop it. Uh, but that's all I can say. Um, Wait, you got to say more. <laughs> the Verona mixtape. I mean, you kind of just dropped a nugget. Give us a little bit more about what do you mean mixtape? Okay, well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I, I'm working on. I'm working on. You know, I, I have a vision for this whole thing, and I've been working on it uh, since Hotel Allen, and I have an end to it. I have a finish to it, but I I don't want to get there yet just yet. So I keep kind of creating little. So I think that's what I've been doing with with this whole. I call them the name series. You know. Courtney, Harry, and Christian. Um, and I just, it, since this quarantine started, I've been toying with, you know, maybe I could just record myself playing guitar with my phone and, and sing vocals and drop a mixtape of just a bunch of scratch guitar and vocal stuff, or I can go and actually produce it out, do that, but then produce it out with my producers and, and come up with some, you know, real good music there. But um, we actually just dug into a project we'd been working on uh, for a future release and just grabbed a, cut like a grouping of songs and then put a little story behind it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's called Verona's mixtape. And I'm really, really excited about that. Got so. you. So would you um, say that like, it's a conceptual, like a concept art piece? It is. It is always, always the case. I mean, I think that's just kind of across the board that, that that's how it goes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a story. It's uh, a kid dropped off a mixtape of, of Alan Raymond songs he found that I forgot I'd made, and uh, it's for his girl, and he wanted me to promote it. So that's what I'm doing that's right awesome. now. awesome. So... Yeah. I don't know how he found the song, but <laughs> it's me. <laughs> but I like them. I, I forget even having written them. So are you drinking a beer right now? Because I'm definitely on tea. Is that beer? No, it's tea. It's called Alexander Keith's. Where's that from? I've never seen that before. Yeah, it's a... Uh, <laughs> It's India Pale Ale Tea. Hmm. Um, no, okay. it's, beer. Oh, it's Canadian. It's Canadian. I think it's Nova Scotia. Gotcha. Am I right? Yeah, it's Nova Scotia. That's fantastic beer. Canada's got what beer. is your favorite drink in quarantine? Is it beer? Oh, 
No. Um, no, it's not actually. Uh, your core team's been pretty healthy for me, really? to be honest. I um, drink a lot of water, yeah. But uh, I love, you know, it's it's springtime here in, in um, Toronto, and it's definitely a slow spring. We got beautiful days on and off, but it's, it's, there's still a nip to the air. Um, but you know, <laughs> vodka is yeah. pretty nice uh, with a Caesar, you know, or Bloody Mary, as you guys yeah, know yeah, down there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You, you love yeah. to sneak down here to Minnesota, right? Because is it because of golf? Is I that what it is? You come down here for a lot? <laughs> <laughs> I, of all things, I do not go to Minnesota for the golf, no. What do you typically come yeah. for? Um, no, honestly, we just, there's always been a, a calling for us out there. I mean, I think we're just very, I'm very lucky. Um, I'm very lucky to have been to the places I've been and, um toward the way i do and you know i mean we we're a very quiet act but we we have a reach with with audience with tickets yeah. so i'm very lucky for for the for for the traveling that i've been able to do and I honestly i don't pick the places they just i have a great agent and um we kind of just decide where we want to go based on demand sure. for a show that we you know when, when he's confident you can do it you know, i think the, the benchmark is you know at least 200 tickets then let's travel, you know, let's travel, whatever is like, let's, yeah. let's go. What's so. your favorite um, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Twin Cities memory? I don't, oh man. Um, I don't know, really. It's, uh, I've had some times for sure. I've had some times. I, I was sick as a dog. I played my first show. I think it was my first show. I was sick as hell. And my sister came, uh, she was from, she's living in Boston and my sister came up from Boston with her husband and, um, she watched the show and I was sick. And every time I'm sick as a dog for a show, it ends up being my best. Show. I don't know what it is. I think it's adrenaline. Yeah. I think adrenaline just takes over and I can just, I just shred, but then I'm dead after and everyone wants to sell it like Sally and have a good yeah. time. And I can't, do, I can't do squat. I'm, I'm going to bed, so it's uh, it's always tough. But yeah, it was a good time. We had a, we had a fun night that nice. night. Nice. Sure. Um, can I circle back to the like album, Christian, for a second? Because I had a really particular couple Ooh, questions yeah. as a fan. I want to ask you. Mm. I think it was the song "Bunny," where you start out saying, "I love you, I love you, I love you." Mm -hmm. Was that you practicing? Yeah. Was you saying "I love you" to someone in real life, or trying? How? What was that all about? That moment. Well, there are three big words. That's what the song's kind of all about, is the three big words. And, uh, you know, I think everyone knows when they say it and they mean it. You know what I mean? With those words. Um, if you've ever said it and you meant it to someone, you're never going to forget that that moment. Um, and that doesn't mean, you know, when, you know, when you if you live with that person, you say it every day. But when you first say it, you know, Um that's kind of what that is. And it's just me saying it a bunch of times because it wasn't practice. I was just actually just saying it a bunch of bunch, just over and over again, kind of in like almost, uh, I don't really pick my words carefully here. Cause I don't want to be disrespectful, but almost in like, um, like in a stutter, you know, like in a kind of Howard Hughes kind of way, you know, mm -hmm. um, when you just get trapped or in like a circle of saying a word, like, I think in the movie, in the movie, uh, he goes quarantine, 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 quarantine. Like you just start saying it over and over. You know, I love you, 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 I love you. You just kind of like you can get stuck mm -hmm. in that when sometimes and that happened, and we just recorded it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's like that whole song. Like it's, uh, I remember, I've I've said it twice and meant it. So I I know both times. Yeah, you remember so. it specifically. It sounded like when I was listening to that. I was like, wow, I really connect with this, even though you were repeating the same three words over and over again. By the end, I was like, oh, he really loves this person, whoever he's saying it to. Whether it was you were saying it to yourself in a mirror or saying it to a uh, romantic interest, I couldn't tell it. At first, I was like, he's saying it to himself in the mirror, trying to say, I love myself. Like, I love you. I love you. And yeah. then I was like, oh, maybe it's something else. But no matter what it is, I was sold by the end. I was like, it's real. Like, that's real love right there. And I love that moment in the album, even though it had nothing to do with singing per se. It was a yeah. really cool okay, yeah, yeah. spoken word piece that I would love to see you explain. I mean, I, 
I've been trying to, I've been, I've been always trying to explore spoken word from, there's a song I have called uh, Alabama song on Hotel Allen and a song called Jim story on Roadhouse one. And, um, Courtney and Harry kind of, you know, I don't know. I, I went off a little bit and enjoyed myself with those albums for yeah. sure. Um, uh, yeah, we're going back in that direction though, for sure. And, and it's, uh, yeah, you know, I think the whole point of the songs and, and where, at least when I write them is that it's so many different perspectives. It's so confusing sometimes. I mean, a lot of the time it could just be the Roadhouse Allen relationship where I'm, I'm just talking to myself from a more confident standpoint to the more weaker version of like the confident side of me is talking to the weaker side of me and saying, you know, mm -hmm. man up kind of thing, toughen up a bit. Um, or I'm talking to, you know, or sometimes it seems like I'm talking to a girl, but I'm actually talking to, to myself, the weaker side of myself. And I'm not saying that girls are weak, but like it is a trick that you can use as a writer, I guess, where you can kind of play with people. You can, you can toy with them a little bit and, I don't do it on purpose. It's all subconscious. Honestly, when it comes to writing and stuff, it's so, I'm just a conduit or something. I'm so lucky. I have no idea. I'm such the wrong man for the job. I've always yeah. said it and I, I truly am, but I really do this, the right, the music. I've never been concerned about making an album or making more music. And I love it. I love it. I really, and, I, and I've, I've said it and I, and I don't mean to sound like a dick or anything. I need to like it. I need to love it because I, if I didn't, I started making it only for people who listen to it. Like that's something else that's industry. And I can't be, I, I'm not, you know, that's where I, I don't fit. Well, in. I don't so that's see you. And I don't think any of your fans see you as a trend follower. We see you sort of as a unique entity in the music world, doing your own thing. And it feels like a secret like a secret club, like we know about you and we want the rest of the world to know about your talents and your amazing voice and they don't know yet. And we're like all here, like <laughs> how do we get the world to know about Alan Raymond because you are such a special voice in a time of so many voices that sound similar. And it's like, we're all in here in this live, like we want all our friends to know, we want everybody to know about you. And like, we're all here to lift you up the best we can because we believe in you. You know what? I, I, I feel that. And I feel it right now a lot, too. I know it's weird. because it's, it's such tough times for everybody, but I definitely feel it. And, you know, I've always been reluctant and, uh, you know, ner I guess nervous to engage at all with fans um, to let them in at all. And I think I'm, you know, I'm starting to turn a little bit on that and just kind of say, you know, I. I feel fight myself. You know, I fight, I have a fight in me to, uh, and I've been, I'm really trying to watch my words. You know, I'm really trying to watch my words because I don't want to like, I, I in no way am I, um, am I, am I like aggressive towards the industry or anything like that, but I just want to be inspired or be fired up by another artist that like, I truly wish oh, I really want to know what they're doing and how they will go about their work. And I'd love to, you know, get into that. And I'm, I feel like a, I've always said my brother was like born in the wrong era. He should be a Viking swinging an ax through a battlefield, you know, and I'm sure he wishes that was the truth. And, and for me, I think, you know, I wish if any other generation I could have maybe, you know, had, uh, you know, done something, something, I don't, not that like tough. Um, I'm fr I feel like I'm from a different generation. Which I guess generation that's, that's would you put yourself in? I just I just want to make music and just have music speak for itself and then we champion the music we don't champion the personality I think it's just tough because like you you want the the better an artist generally it goes the better an artist the crazier they are and very not you know it's not easy to be around crazy people <laughs> and it's uh it's it's so I think it's a strange thing when you um when you know i've been asked you know okay i'm raving the music is great i like the music i like i like the show but like if i you ask me what the art who the artist is i have no idea i can't tell you who the personality is and i think that's that's always been something i struggle with because i don't why didn't want people to know it you, know, you I were don't, I don't, a mystery I for the longest time i even remember when i first discovered you because i work in radio i went on like this mission to try to figure out what label you were on and you were sort of like moving and figuring things out and there was like three pictures of you on the internet for a while like that was it <laughs> you were you were not on the internet yeah. 
No, I know. I can't. I yeah. I I don't know. I was hiding. Well, and uh, you know what? There was. I didn't. I also had no idea. I didn't know what I wanted people to see of me. Anyways, I had no way of of knowing what I wanted to even be perceived at. All I knew what I could do is I could if if I if I hide in the shadows, I can just be this thing that people see. Mm -hmm. You know, they see it through. Hear, they hear about it. They hear it through the music, and they see it at a yeah. show. But they never get to meet it. They never get to speak, hear it speak. You know, you can be like Batman. You know, you could be. Um, and I really wanted that. I really wanted to stay doing that. Um, but you can't. You can't. There's the commerce is important here, and and I have a team of people who need to work. You need this thing to also <laughs> move and work. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's such a tough. There's no at this point with music where we are. It's so far gone that you, like you need uh, not even the most not even the most brilliant minds in the game, not even the most strong, most in influential people could help an artist do just but that because it's commerce. Wouldn't you day, say? So. I mean, I would say this about you, but I think that you're one of the most authentic musicians I've ever had the pleasure of having more than a five minute conversation with, and on top of that. What's really interesting about you, and correct me if I'm misspeaking here, but you you kind of were a reluctant musician. Is that a fair way to put it? How's that it? you said that you didn't ex ever expect to be a singer at one point, right? That you sort of fell into singing. Was that the story? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. Um, talked into it by my friends, and then it got busier and busier. To, I quit two jobs to... Uh, and for your fans who don't know, because it is hard to find things about you on the internet, what is the story about how your friends talked you into becoming a singer? Um, honestly, me and my me and a group of friends, uh, five one two is the name mm -hmm. of the crew. Uh, just a bunch of you know, it, it was high school, and uh, I moved around a bit from different high schools and. I found a group of, of of good good friends of mine who live in the neighborhood here in Toronto, um, and they called themselves the Five One Two. And I, I fucking I love these kids, man. These guys are they took me in as a little brother, and uh, the freestyle. every night we just have some beers in Aviv's garage and freestyle. And these guys were they were there's something called King of the Dot to anyone who knows about that. It's called K-O-T-D, King of the Dot. I don't know why I'm putting it on so hard. Like, I had anything to do with it. But uh, these guys, Tricky P, Feel Good, uh, Lavish Language. I mean, these guys were free they, they freestyled, and they battled other kids from all over Canada. My buddy Tricky P at one point flew to England to rap, battle kids in England. And he was going to the States, to L.A. He was, he was battling. It. it was all about Trick for me when I was coming up. It was all about my buddy Trick. And... I just watched him freestyle and he was the most talented person I ever seen in my life. The way he strung together, he was truly one of the best rappers I've ever seen or heard of. And, uh, he kind of taught me, like I would just freestyle with him and he always knew I had a rhythm and, and my words were, he liked my words, but obviously I wasn't a rapper. Um, and, uh, I just owe it. I owe it all to these guys. Yeah, in the five one two, I took the name. I, I stuck with it. It's on this poster behind me somewhere. I'm sure. Yeah, right at the top. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, it's just always been something I, I carry so so proudly with me. It's such a good group of uh, good group of friends, you know. And the, so you need that supportive group behind you, and they and they push me into it, and they pump me up, and you know, and and they gave me the confidence to do this, and. Cool. Adam Merlick also, I should, I should mention his name. He is uh, just, that's a whole other story we don't need to go into, but Adam Merlick is, is, is my dude. He's, he was my manager from day one, and uh, still to this day, he's, he's hard working on the project every day. We talk on the phone about it, and uh, he just had a kid. So, well, he didn't just have a kid, but the kid's about to be, I think, one and a half or two. I don't know, E, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. I don't know kid's age right now. <laughs> Time is hard in quarantine, though, right? It feels like we've been doing this for two years, but it's only been two months. It's all very confusing right now. And you just said that you were freestyling. <laughs> and I want, wait, does that mean you'll ever freestyle on an album in the future? You know, if you dig hard enough, I'm sure you could find some Alan Raymond rap. On a mixtape yeah, somewhere I, uh... that hasn't come out. Somewhere, yeah. I used to go by the name Ray. I shouldn't tell, tell you this because people are, are listening. But um, 
Yeah, I used, to, I, used to, I used to freestyle so much. I like it was all about rap first for me, and but I never listened to rap like the way my friends did. I listened to classic rock and grunge, and you know the stuff I love and and emulate, I guess, as a musician. But I work with Moose, who listens to, who grew up on hip hop, and I all my friends grew up on hip hop, and so I like I kind of adopted elements of it for sure. But and I I, I suppose I'm going to go back to that, and you know, and I think that's what really worked for us at the very beginning, and. Maybe it's time we go back to that and try that with the uh, with this new um, accessible Alan that we're seeing more. And more well, it's today, nice to see you. I You're nice know. to look at. I'll say that for other women out there. I'll say that for myself. You're nice to look <laughs> at. But um, when it comes to when you get out of quarantine, you were talking about earlier, like musicians you look up to or ones you've been following. Who are some of those people that you would maybe want to work with? Um. I'll tell you my ideal scenario. I'll tell you my dream right now, okay? I'd love to get a riverboat raft tour, like one of those big old steamboats. Okay, yeah, 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 the, yeah. On the, the back, big white you know? ones. I want to go down the Mississippi, and I want Eddie Vedder, Dave Matthews, Marcus Mumford, and... <sighs> Shit, there's one more... Uh... I like I where your I head's at, though, because I know I heard. Yeah. I'm going to be revealing a secret here. Gary Clark Jr. Oh, I want, yeah. I, I want Gary Clark on there. And then I want to do me, obviously. <laughs> and it, it would be like a 10-year goal for me where we all just do acoustic songs and it's acoustic sets. And we set it and pull up on little, I guess, amphitheaters along the along the way. And and that would just be an epic little, you know, I'm sure there's amazing. Yeah, Ben Howard, I'm sure. You know, there's, a, there's a bunch of acoustic sets that would be amazing. But, yeah, those are some of my favorites. Growing up, like, better and... Dave Matthews for me. Dave is a huge reason as to why I I, I write music. I, like, that's the kind. He's the kind of music that you listen to, and it literally transports you. Like, I can listen. I can shut my eyes, and I'm always on a summer day listening to Dave. No matter, and I'm outside, and I'm on a lake, and it could be dead of winter, and I'm in, you know, Paris yeah. or some crap like that. And I'm, but all of a sudden, I, I put on a Dave Matthews song, and I'm back, and it's warm and. It's well, warm. you brought yeah, up you two, like you shut your eyes two bands it. that people actually followed around the world, around the United States, probably around Canada, too, though I'm not as familiar. But, I mean, Dave Matthews Band and Pearl Jam are both bands that people who are fans of them will be like, oh, I've seen over 50 shows. I mean, yeah. that would be amazing to have you team up well, with them not, and create some music, go down that river. It's not boat. crazy far fetched. We've done, we've done some, we've had some things happen in in life so far that I've really kind of connected some of those dots. I was, I was invited by Vetter's, uh, like by their, now I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you a story, but what? it's okay. I'm just going to tell anyway. I was, I was flown out to Seattle and I, I got to go to their whole, their factory, this Pearl Jam factory. Um, and, uh, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe what they have in there. It's, the coolest stuff ever and i maybe shouldn't say the story i guess but, but yeah they have a magical per pearl jam land where uh every if you were a pearl jam fan you got to step foot in there i'll tell you whoo, you would lose your mind what was in and, there uh, i can't i don't know if i can go into it but i'll tell you the coolest thing about it was the girl who's walking me around showing me around the whole place she was the girl on the cover of, of jeremy with the white tank top and the gun that's cool so I was for me. We had a cigarette at the end. And I was like, "That's this is that's cooler than the whole everything I just seen." So, uh, but yeah, they got it all in there. They're they're they're. When I saw that, it, it was to me, it was a big hello kind of moment of what you know what you could really do with music if you really made it into if you really did it. How far you can um, take it? You know, how far you can take it? Yeah, and how far and how much involved? You know how it's such a fine line with the fans. Again, I always goes back to fans and stuff like that. And I, oh, I hate the word. I hate the word even saying it. I don't you mind know? it. I'll I say even, I'm a fan. It's word. fine for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and that's, that's totally cool. I just hate saying I have them or something like that, you know, but I, I also am coming around to like say, how can I involve them in a way where they feel more like, um, they're part of it too, you know, part of a fight. Cause it is a little bit of a fight, you know, we're so weird. We're so different. And you want to see this work. You want to see it do well then fight for it you know fight get it request it on your radio stations you know you are the people you, you choose the music you want to listen to you know if you really want to hear it out and see it do it do its thing fight for it then fight 
fight with me mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll get it we'll get after it together would that be a good bridge for me to ask some fan questions because we do have a couple fan questions ask away um one fan asked how is it that you take negative sad emotions and how do you actually turn those into creative moments Um, it's that's kind of one of those uh i'm so lucky that i i guess i have a creative muscle for that because you know i just kind of it, it just flows or it doesn't you know it doesn't happen all the time you know I, there's a lot of bad days and you don't do anything with it but then you, you get lucky you go into the studio and you have a chance to do something creative and then it comes out it's kind of like therapy in a way you don't you don't address it it addresses you you know it comes out and it um it'll manifest itself in a way in some way or another on its own liking i think you yeah. know if that makes any no sense. a lot of people say that music is therapy mm -hmm. for us as the listeners but also for you as the creator i mean that absolutely makes sense i'm pulling up some more questions here um yeah someone said they're they know you're a big fan of movies uh what are some of the best movies you've watched mm -hmm. in quarantine I'll just say one, Paris, Texas. It's a fantastic movie. It's probably one of my favorite movies. Um, beautiful movie. Cinematography, lighting, colors. Oh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And the story is so, it's such a warm story. Um, simple, you know, it's kind of like my perfect movie because it's, the plot isn't crazy. It's not a lot of, you don't have to really f follow along. You can kind of get lost in the whole picture of it. So Paris, Texas, go watch that movie if you've never seen I've it. I've never seen it, so I'll fantastic. go watch it. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It's slow. It's a slow burn, but just, I don't know. I, I would pour a glass of wine and check that movie Someone out. Someone just wrote in the comments, and I'm going to bring this up because um, I'm a big fan of Jesse Reyes as well, but someone just dropped, are you ever going to collaborate with her again? Yeah, you know what? You go ask her that question. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you two known each other? Um while now yeah a long time before i think before she was even i think before she even thought yeah I, you know i don't know maybe she didn't think about it at the time but yeah through moose we know her, we know each other through moose and she's wonderful i, I love that girl she's i want to see her take over the world so i'm i'm so excited for her and she's and she is and she's going to so just watch you her both will but, i believe uh, in both of you to the utmost degree let me yeah. pull up another question here um, this is funny. Yeah. Someone said, Alan, what's your worst lyric? It's my worst lyric. Uh, I'll just tell you right now, probably Stitch. You know? <laughs> yeah, I love Stitch. Trust me. Like it's growing on me. I like that song, but th that song is a demo <laughs> that somehow got made into a single. Okay. Let me pull up one more here. Yeah. Um, what inspired you to make 6am and Madhouse? Um, well, I mean, I, I think those are, uh, <laughs> the song is kind of speak for himself. 6 a.m. is a, a bad Thursday, I guess, you know, you have a bad day and, you know, um, I love that. You know what? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you here, 6 a.m. That boy ain't right. If any of you know of a show called King of the sure. Hill, there's your little, there's your little Easter egg, <laughs> King of the Hill. 6 a.m. already that boy ain't right. That's kind of where that oh, phrase comes from. But that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, do you have any other favorite cartoons? Probably. No, not really. I guess I I, well, I used to fall asleep to Family Guy all the time. I love that show. Um, yeah. No, I don't know. I'm, I, now I kind of don't have any patience for for cartoons. But that's just me. I was not nothing against them. I just I like real people. And, yeah. Real movies, like, I don't know. If there was one thing that people who aren't a part of this secret society we have of like being crazy super fans of you, like me, what would you want them to know about you as Alan Raymond, the singer and the artist? Well, first off, I'd like to say, um, you know, thank you for riding along. And I'm sorry if I, you know, don't play the part <laughs> uh, well enough sometimes uh 
you know, it's tough. I got. I'm figuring it all out the same way. I think you know anybody else is out here. I think one day at a time. And I just like to make music, and I like to make stories, and and I like to be creative, and I like to play shows, and I'm so lucky to get to do all those in spades. So as long as I can keep doing those things and and keep having that canvas to paint on, then I'm I'm gonna be painting, and I'm gonna be uh, and I'm gonna be sharing. So just thank you and. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to keep, I keep trucking. Yeah. So uh, until the day comes that I don't like uh, doing what I'm doing. And, you know, that day's kind of creeped here and creeped there and then subsides, but I think we're all right. So it all ebbs and flows, right? Kind time. of like going through anything. Life's a roller coaster. That's it. We're a highway. <laughs> yeah. You know, from that Canadian, what's that Canadian singer who sang that one? Uh, God, what's his name? He also sang the song Boy Inside the Man. That's a great yeah. song, too. I forget his um, name. A, Someone in here. A lot name. of people are dropping in the comments the Timberwolf little emoji. For people that don't know, do you want to explain why the Timberwolf keeps coming up in the comments? The thing on my hand here? This yeah, thing? see, people seem to know about that, your tattoo, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, well, I, the wolf has always been my animal, and it's always been. Uh, how I kind of feel about you. Know, I'm a lone, bit of a lone wolf. I, 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 the one, one of my biggest regrets is that I never, Tom Cochran. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Someone nailed it. Tom yes. Cochran. That's it. That's right. Um, no, it's always been, been, it's always been kind of a, you know, I would love to have a band that did this with me from day one. And I guess Moose is kind of that band and uh, he's a producer though. He's kind of a bit more shy yeah. on stage and it's been on, we've shared stage, but, um yeah you know and uh i got i got so lucky to play with some of the best musicians you know and they come and go and i love that and and i support everything they do and they support me and you know i think one day i'd love i think if i could tomorrow if this quarantine ended tomorrow i'd go start a band with with my buddy mike and uh, it'd be something separate from alan i'd still do alan raymond stuff but i'd probably start a band with him and put in put an album out within six months we'd have an album out so you know i don't see why you can't be prolific i don't see why it's a bad thing to put out as much music as you want you know and just make sure you like it if you're an artist just make sure you like it don't put out things for other people don't put out too much because you you know if i put if i put something out tomorrow it's not because i i dislike christian yeah. because i just made something and i want to put it out you know like i made christian a year ago you know what i mean like to, to not put anything out for a year for me mm -hmm. is insane I, I want to put music out. So, yeah, Christian's out. Well, this one's coming out, too. Well, I mean, it's you a know. digital universe, so, so it feels like more and more singles, one-off projects, and all these things keep coming up for people. I think you're living in the right era, honestly, to put out nonstop music, if that's what you continue to want to do. Maybe. Maybe maybe there's a bit of, bit of everything mm -hmm. and everything. Maybe. And you could always call your next album yeah. Lone Wolf, and all of us in here will know why you did that. <laughs> I always like to like to hide things and things, right? So I don't think I'd ever be so blatant about it, but maybe I'd call it something like uh, last year or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> you know, something like that. Like about I got you. Well, thank but, you for spending so much time with us today. We really appreciate you checking in, hanging out, answering so no, many course, questions. Hey, all the time. And thank you guys for just supporting me. You know, I mean, like it's... You know, I don't got a lot of you guys out there, and, and I really do appreciate everything you've ever done for me and, and continue to do for me, and I'm always riding with you guys. So whenever whenever you want me back out there, let's throw a show, let's play it up. Let's There's a lot it. of music in the world, but there isn't a lot of music like yours in the world. And any opportunity, I think any of us as fans in here can have to champion something that's as special and unique as what you do, we're all going to do it for you. Your music and your talent speaks for itself, that's and we really you, appreciate what nice. you do. Thank you so much. That's the sweetest mm -hmm. thing. Thanks so much. Well, thank you and have a great time in quarantine at the cabin and at your house right now. And we'll we'll check yeah. in soon and definitely let us know when you have new music. We'll put it on Go 963 for you. Very soon, 100%. I'll send you something okay. right now. I'll All send right. you guys something just but not for these people. I'll send you It'll guys be a secret. take a listen. <laughs> okay. Bye. Take care. Bye.